The Apple iPhone 12 has been revealed in stunning new renders and I'll be sharing the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So this week we've had plenty of news surrounding the upcoming Apple iPhone 12. We've had stunning new renders that reveal the design of the upcoming range and we now have pricing leaks for all four models. Before we get into it, please like the video if you're excited for the iPhone 12 launch and let me know in the comments what version you're waiting for. We of course know there's going to be four versions of the Apple iPhone 12 and this was tipped very early on by Ming-Chi Kuo. John Prosser has now followed up on this and given us details of the pricing for each model. While I was personally expecting some huge price jumps, that's actually not the case and there is a good reason for that. First of all, we've got the 5.4 inch iPhone 12 for those of you that like smaller phones. Codenamed D52D, it's equipped with an aluminium body, a smaller notch, the Apple A14 Bionic system on chip, an OLED display, a 5G modem and a dual camera setup on the rear. The starting price for this model is only $649 and I have to be honest, that's not bad at all, especially considering it's got the A14 and an OLED display. For those of you that want the 6.1 inch iPhone 12, it's codenamed D53G and it's also got an aluminium body, a smaller notch, the A14 Bionic, an OLED display, a 5G modem and a dual camera setup and the starting price for this model is just $749. We've also got the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro. Codenamed D53P, we get a stainless steel body, a smaller notch, the Apple A14, an OLED display and a 5G modem, but on the Pro however, we get three cameras along with an AR sensor on the rear and this model is going to be starting from $999. Last, but certainly not least, we've got the 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro Max. This model is codenamed D54P and also has a stainless steel body. We get a smaller notch, the A14 Bionic, the OLED display, the 5G modem, triple camera setup with the AR sensor and the iPhone 12 Pro Max is going to be starting from $1,099. While these prices are still high, we have to remember specs are becoming much better. We also have to remember that Apple, who were known for their high prices, have actually come out with reasonable prices in comparison to some of the competition. While some of the hardware is not as good as the Galaxy S20 Ultra, we have to remember that that launched at a whopping $1400, so Apple have definitely beat them in price. And in normal Apple fashion, the A14 chip is going to be the best benchmarking chip and everything else will no doubt perform well also. Speaking of Samsung, one of the main ways Apple have reduced costs this time round was actually by not working with Samsung. On their previous range, the displays were manufactured by Samsung, but this time round they'll be turning to BOE who actually provide displays for many other smartphones in the market. Next up, we've got the design of the Apple iPhone 12. Phone Arena, who are well known for their stunning renders, have provided us with a huge amount of images that cover the whole range of the iPhone 12s. The renders are high quality and provide us a great view at the upcoming range as they fall in line with all of the leaks and reports. They've given us some great renders of the standard iPhone 12 that we don't see that often from concept renders and the phone looks exactly like what I would expect. The only thing that may be a little over exaggerated here is of course the notch. I think it's going to be slightly bigger than we see on these standard iPhone 12 images but we'll have to wait and see. The renders of the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max also look stunning and it won't be too much longer until we have something to compare them to. Of course we already have a lot of information regarding the whole Apple iPhone 12 range and I have covered this multiple times. For my regular viewers you'll have already seen them so I advise to stop watching now but if you're new here then I recommend you hit the subscribe button and I'm going to run through all of the details we have. When it comes to the iPhone 12 though, one thing we haven't had leaked yet is the name. Although we're unlikely to see any radical changes, so we're going to assume for this video that it's called the Apple iPhone 12. We're expecting to get four new iPhone 12s in the range, which is going to be two different iPhone 12s, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We're expecting Apple to increase the display sizes on the most premium models, although those who want a smaller display are still going to have an option.
Reliable analyst Ming Chi Kuo has advised that there's going to be two iPhone 12 versions. The smaller iPhone 12 is going to have a 5.4 inch display, and the larger one will have a 6.1 inch. We then get a 6.1 inch display, which is the iPhone 12 Pro, and a 6.7 inch display, which is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Unlike last year, however, all models are reportedly going to be using an OLED display and the resolution will differ across the range. The 6.1 inch iPhone 12 will likely have a lower resolution than the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro. And while there are rumors of Apple removing the notch, I really can't see this happening. In typical Apple fashion, we're still expecting a full screen display with a notch top center. It's too early for in display camera sensors and I can't see Apple going for a punch hole. They also need a time of flight sensor on the front for their 3D face unlock. And while Apple did ditch the fingerprint scanner on the iPhone X, there are reports that it's going to be coming back in the form of an in-display fingerprint scanner. There are reports suggesting that Apple are also going to be increasing their refresh rates on the latest displays. While most phones have stuck to 60Hz displays, it's been changing recently and Apple are also going to be joining this trend. At this stage, we don't know if they're going to be using 90Hz, 120Hz or even a mixture of the two across the range. When it comes to the rear of the device, we're expecting a similar camera setup to last year, but the more premium model will have more cameras. Ming-Chi Kuo has again advised that both the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max are going to be adding time-of-flight cameras to the rear. For those unaware, time-of-flight cameras are 3D depth cameras and then what Apple uses on the front for the 3D face unlock. The time-of-flight sensors on the rear, however, use slightly different technology that allow it to map 3D objects from further away. This significantly improves augmented reality applications and allows for more improved portrait style photo and video effects. We're likely going to see slight upgrades on the other cameras of the iPhone 12s, but given the great performance in its predecessor, they won't be changing things too much. Reports are suggesting that the two more budget models are going to have a dual camera setup, while the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max are going to have a quad camera setup with the inclusion of the 3D depth camera. The iPhone 12 is of course going to be powered by the new A14 Bionic processor. This is actually manufactured using 5 nanometer lithography, which will bring significant improvements, and there's a good chance that it will be the first 5 nanometer chipset to hit the market. When it comes to RAM, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is expected to come with 6 gigs of RAM, or the standard iPhone 12 will only have 4. This is something that I think Apple actually do well compared to Android manufacturers, where they throw in unnecessarily large amount of memories, causing the consumer to pay for memory that they don't even need. When it comes to storage, you're expecting a choice of 64, 256 or 512 gigs of internal storage. For the first time ever, consumers felt Apple did a great job in prioritizing the battery life on the predecessor, so hopefully that's something that's going to continue with the iPhone 12. While graphene batteries are still out of the question, we can expect a 5.4 inch iPhone 12 to be around 2800 mAh, the 6.1 inch is probably going to be around 3150 and the 6.7 inch should contain around a 4300 mAh battery. One thing that is a little unknown at the moment is of course 5G connectivity. Apple are very bad when it comes to 5G thanks to earlier issues with Qualcomm, so we're unsure at this stage if that's something we will see in the iPhone 12. It's rumored that the iPhone 12 is going to have 5G connectivity, but there aren't actually any leaks or reports to back that up. The iPhone 12 is going to be IP68 water resistant and it's of course going to ship with iOS 14. Now when it comes to the price, people wanted lower prices and that's exactly what we're getting. Apple surprised us last time, they surprised us again with the iPhone SE and now the iPhone 12 is going to be the same. We'll be getting the base 5.4 inch iPhone 12 starting at $649, the iPhone 12 6.1 inch at $749, the iPhone 12 Pro 6.1 inch at $999 and finally the iPhone 12 Pro Max 6.1 7 inch phone at $1,099. Some very reasonable prices from Apple who have clearly been focusing on keeping the cost down. Of course, it's not all about specs and we're likely going to see some new software features or improvements to the current features in iOS 14.
The iPhone 12 is set to launch in September as always, and it's always around the second week they release, so we can expect to see the iPhone 12 range on either the 8th or the 15th of September, and the iPhone 12 will be released about 10 days afterwards. Of course, being so far away, these are leaks and rumours, but as more information comes to light, I'll be sharing with you guys straight away. As always though, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is waiting for the Apple iPhone 12? What model are you waiting for and what do you think of these prices? But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it smash the thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.